Okay, as I talk, uh, Felicia is going to be changing the channel for me, and uh, it kind of goes slow a little bit sometimes, but bear with me. We do have a number of slides, but we, what you have in front of you is actual copy of the state of the district, and um, so just, if you bear with me, then I'm going to read a little bit here and explain how we're going to do this tonight. Good evening to board members. Tonight, I'm excited to present our fourth annual state of the district presentation. I've been so proud to share this information during this time each year and this year is no different you should each have a copy of the presentation in front of you i would ask that you please hold any questions until the end of the presentation just make a mark and then we'll come back to it and we have staff here who can go into detail it is important to keep our mission at the forefront of what we do in putnam county in the putnam county school district we will inspire every student to think to learn to achieve to care and to become a successful and responsible citizen. I want to spend the first part of this presentation discussing our district's response to COVID-19. As you all know, in the spring of 2020, we had to pivot almost overnight to online instruction. When we left for spring break, we were unsure when we would see our students face to face again. One of our first tasks was to design a way to keep students engaged and learning while at home. We created the PCSD Home Learning. During spring campus closure, the curriculum team created a phased approach for instruction. This approach allows students to continue to engage in the activities they were accustomed to doing at school. Virtual professional learning was provided for teachers and leaders to support the work in PCSD Home Learning. Every few weeks, expectations increased as PCSD Home Learning continued. The Department of Teaching and Learning created a four-phase plan of support, each phase supported by teachers by creating pacing guides and lesson plans, providing professional learning and partnering with other professionals to enhance the quality of, edu of educator and student engagement. Learning did not, did not stop when school, the school year ended. Through grant funding, we were able to provide expanded learning opportunities to students during the summer. To help families and students continue to learn throughout the summer, our elementary and secondary students had access to online programs such as Alex, Myon, and iReady. As we begin to plan for the 2020-2021 school year, the district created a community-based task force to collect input on what reopening Putnam County Schools should look like. We appreciate the time and the effort from those who served on the task force. <coughs> Excuse me. Because of the work done by the task force and the curriculum team in the spring, when the state offered the innovative option, we were able to quickly develop and submit a district reopening plan that was one of the first to be approved. We created a school reopening guide for families and developed extensive information housed on the PCSD webpage to help parents and students make informed decisions about the three reopening plans. We use CARES funding to invest in digital learning products and online resources to support teachers and learners. Throughout the first nine weeks, we allow parent choice and flexibility to find the learning option that is the best suited for their students. Throughout the last nine weeks and the summer, our district made a high level commitment to meeting the nutritional needs of our students. Many of our students rely on school breakfast and lunch and our bus drivers and food service workers went above and beyond to keep our students fed. Over 5,000 of our students, approximately 65% of our student body were collecting bags of breakfast and lunch. 47 buses across the district delivered food at over 700 bus stops. Our bus drivers covered over 2,300 miles each day in a matter of hours. From spring break 2020 through the end of the summer, our food service and transportation department served 769,004 meals via drive through or bus delivery. Additionally, our custodial maintenance teams worked hard, worked very hard these past few months to protect our students and staff members, which health officials say also helped mitigate 
and slow the spread of the coronavirus in our community. These individuals are on the front lines and perform the critical role of cleaning and disinfecting our buildings every day. Our IT department reached out to community partners to secure wireless connectivity for our students all around the county. They work daily with staff and families to ensure our PCSD home learning platforms work soundly and that all participants have the tools they need to succeed in this new form of learning. A technology hotline was established to ensure support was available. The media department worked tirelessly to produce and disseminate information as it became available. We found it imperative to share positive messages and celebrations within our community. In order to support the emotional health of our students during the COVID-19 pandemic, our school-based mental wellness staff provided telehealth mental health assistance. Any child in need of mental wellness support or counseling was able to call the Putnam County School District and was quickly put in touch with a counselor. The Putnam County School District was awarded $4,300,366,000 in CARES grant funding. The district used this money for activities that include hiring additional teachers to assist the needs of students, addressing learning gaps associated with COVID-19, purchasing computer hardware and technology related platforms to prevent the disruption in learning due to COVID-19, and hiring additional custodial staff to increase cleaning and sanitation in schools. We also created an additional health clinic to serve as a triage room for students who present with COVID-19 related symptoms. We hired a triage assistant to staff the clinic and purchase items related, related to stocking of the health clinic. And that was in each school, by the way. Masks, rubber gloves, face shields, PPEs, sprayers for disseminating sanitizing materials, hand sanitizer, disinfectant, and similar items were also purchased. Let's talk about academic growth for a minute. Even amidst the pandemic, the school district continues to grow academically. We thank our students, parents, teachers, staff, and community for setting the expectation high for student learning. Our district academic learning data demonstrates that we are steadily growing. You can see growth and maintenance in ELA and mathematics. There were no major drops before the pandemic, and based on the beginning of the year program monitoring data, there are several areas to celebrate that show that we did not suffer the COVID-19 slide. I attribute this academic progress to the great work we have done over the past few years to create systems to support academic growth in our schools. Eight months of this year has been focused on creating and maintaining an educational enrichment during the COVID-19 pandemic. I would like to thank our staff, our students and parents in the entire Putnam County community for the work and efforts put, put into keeping our children engaged in learning. I would like to transition to the progress we've made in relation to our strategic plan. The strategic plan of the Putnam County School District is focused on cultivating a learning community where students are engaged in learning, where they strive for excellence and where they are supported to achieve. The district's goal is to maximize the learning of all students. There are four key pillars that serve to support this initiative. They are a focus on the growth and achievement of every student, providing a safe and caring learning environment, ensuring the effective and equitable and efficient use of resources, and developing and sustaining great teachers and leaders. There are six superintendent strategic goals that were developed through input from school and community stakeholder groups. These outline what we are striving to implement in service of our overall district goal, and that is to maximize the learning of all students. <clears throat> so the first goal is goal A. It involves professional learning and support for our employees. The district has developed and shared a new vision of teaching and learning. This vision is grounded in creating meaningful learning and empower student ownership. 
This vision also influences how we provide and focus professional learning. We continue to focus on changing teaching practice and improving student outcomes by supporting specific learning communities throughout the district. Here you can find the focus groups for 2019-2020, which is on the left, and on the right is 2020-2021. We realized as spring campus closure occurred that both teachers and leaders would need additional specific learning as we transition to PCSD home learning. Teacher support and professional learning did not stop. This is just a snapshot of the Canvas training, our learning management system that occurred the last nine weeks. Actually, during spring campus closures, there were 109 hours of virtual PD. That's a lot of Zoom. <laughs> we have also developed specific training and support for digital teachers, option two teachers, this, for this year. In preparation for the 2020-21 school year, throughout the summer, the Department of Teaching and Learning collaborated with teachers to create and revise new curriculum docu documents for the 2020-21 school year. Now we'll transition to our second goal, Goal B. Our focus of Goal B is providing a variety of program choices for our students. STEM initiatives have grown tremendously in our school district. We offer a variety of STEM programs from kindergarten to 12th grade. Our students engage in activities ranging from coding to robotics to maker spaces to drones and so many other STEM programs. Enriched STEM programming grows each year across our district. We offer acceleration program, programming across the school district. Our students in each first grade classroom in our district engage in a universal screening process each year. Along with other data, we use the information to place students in acceleration programming at the earliest age. We are proud to offer acceleration programming from kindergarten to 12th grade to serve our students. Here you, here you can see program offerings in each of our area of the county. As you know, we're talking about Cambridge and the Collegiate High School primarily. Because we suspended face-to-face -face instruction in the spring, industry certification was not able to be completed at the end of the school year. The CTE department has worked throughout the summer in the beginning of the school year to help students complete industry certification testing so that our 2019 graduates could use their certifications for employment. Okay, we'll look at goal C. Goal C encompasses on-time graduation and post-secondary goals. We are so excited that over the last four years, our graduation rate has improved from 54.9% in 2015 to a projected rate of 90% for 2020. That is a graduation growth of 35 percentage points, which is the highest in the state during that period of time for any district. One, of the goal, one goal of our district graduation initiative is to exceed the state average. The 2019 gradu graduation rate is only six-tenths percent below the state average and places us one step closer to a target of 90% in 2020. The following slides show how our leaders and teachers have ensured high expectations for all students to graduate on time with a standard diploma. The graduation rate for white students increased 27.2 increased percentage points over the past five years. The Putnam County School District is striving to close the graduation rate gap with our black African American students. The graduation rate for black African American students exceeded the state average for the first time in 2019. The graduation rate for Hispanic students in Putnam County Schools has exceeded the state average for two years in a row and is now above 90%. The graduation rate for students of two or more races increased 16.3 percentage points from 2018 to 2019 and exceeded the state average. 
the graduation rate for students with disabilities increased, get this, 50.7 percentage points over the past five years. That's phenomenal. Very proud of that. The graduation rate for English language learners has exceeded the state average for two years in a row and increased in 2019, even though the state average remained the same. Post-secondary success. Many of our high school students participate in coursework that allows them to earn college credit while earning their high school diploma. We are proud to offer these opportunities at all high schools through the Cambridge, ACE, Collegiate High School, AP, and dual enrollment programs. We have some great success with our Cambridge College credit results from both Crescent City High and QL Roberts Junior Senior High. Displayed here are the college credit results from the group that tested at QI in Crescent City High this past May. These results are remarkable given the change in instruction the last couple of months before the testing began. Students were able to sit for and earn college credit even in the midst of a pandemic. <coughs> As a result of the participation in the Cambridge program, we have had about 200 Bright Future scholarships awarded to students who have received the ACE diploma over the last few years to cover the cost of college tuition. Very proud of that. In, continue, in support of continuing to raise the graduation rate, for the last three years, we have received the competitive JFG, or Jobs for Florida Graduates grant to serve students at risk for not graduating on time. Each of our eight programs serves at least 50 at-risk students. The success rate for this program has been consistently at 93 to 100% graduation for, these, for this at-risk population. We take pride that we continue to apply for and be awarded competitive grants. As the only district in the state of Florida, PCSD was awarded a distance learning grant for program SOAR and placed two high technology distance learning classrooms in each of our high schools. We have been notified that we have been awarded a second distance learning grant for program BEAM, B-E-A-M, that stands for something, <laughs> <laughs> to place two additional high technology distance learning classrooms in each of our middle schools. That's amazing. That's, that's gonna be awesome. Goal D, our stakeholders are an important part of the success of our district. I'd like to highlight just a few novel approaches we've used lately. A Blue Ribbon group of Putnam County businesses and organizations joined the Palatka Daily News to spotlight positive things happening locally and carry out monthly good deeds for the community. Positively Putnam is a 12-month program that features local residents who communicate why they love Putnam and supports monthly projects with positive community impact. One of the strategies in our strategic plan is to create national exposure for the Putnam County School District. One of the ways I've been highlighting Putnam County School District is through presenting at national conferences and superintendent summits. Our schools continue to be recognized for their success on the national stage. Mosley administration, staff, and students were again part of the Learning Sciences International National Conference held digitally this past June. As you know, the year before, they were there in person. As part of the National Chief Science Officers Movement, student leaders are elected at each middle and high school to represent their student body to promote STEM initiatives across our district. For the second year, students have run STEM nights, parent activities, and student STEM events. And that was actually in Tallahassee where they were. Communication. I regularly meet with community stakeholders during my superintendent's advisory council meetings with parents and school representatives at the Parent Involvement District Advisory Council meetings, better known as PIDAC, with students from each of our middle and high schools at the superintendent student advisory council meetings and with staff 
and that in includes both instructional and non-instructional during focus group sessions. The district website recently received a transformational makeover. The new layout allows for easier access to information and is much more user friendly. The new website also allows for a streamlined approach for sharing information across our website and social media channels. We use a variety of social media platforms to share information with our community stakeholders. Our social media channels are steadily gaining followers and subscribers. Local partnerships continue to be an important part of our work. One example, sorry, one example is how the district partnered with the Putnam County Public Library System to promote reading through a virtual literacy week during the spring school campus closure. To enhance student and family engagement during literacy week, our district created themed days to promote reading at home. The Department of Teaching and Learning also facilitated professional learning for our parents on ways to encourage reading. To continue increasing family engagement, our district provided parents with opportunities to learn about many of our digital platforms that we use for student learning. These platforms included iReady, Canvas, Myon, Accelerated Reader, and Alex. Talk about Goal E. We have dedicated leaders in each of our schools that have demonstrated excellence in improving student learning as well as providing leadership throughout the COVID-19 pandemic. Matter of fact, we uh, had a principal meeting today all day long on training on how to, how to observe teachers that are teaching virtually. So uh, they had a long day. Virtual admin meetings. As a district team, we have made an effort to ensure ongoing communication with our leaders. Back in March, we started daily virtual admin meetings as we transitioned at home learning. There has been true value in collaboration between district and school administrators. I'll probably recognize this lady. We are so proud to be the home of Florida's 2020 Principal of the Year, Sarah Jean McDaniel. This year, she will support school leaders in creating strong school culture and implementing learning science international strategies that have been a cornerstone to her success when she was a principal at Mosley. Goal F, our district continues prioritizing the recruitment, retention, and development of talented employees. The Novice Teacher Institute was created four years ago as a three-day support workshop, which provides new teachers to our district with tools to successfully begin their career, as well as help build community and peer relationships. PCSD's Novice Teacher Mentor Program has improved teacher retention for new teachers from 65% to 93% in three years. Matter of fact, this past week, Kristen Carroll uh, presented to a national group about the program, and we just found out that her and Ms. Whitehurst will be able to present to a national organization in January, so we're very proud of that. When novice teachers are supported in a variety of ways, teacher retention rates can and have increased. So you see there in the middle, you can see us going all the way up to 93%. You have that in front of you. Financial accomplishments. Accomplishments related to GoF include being able to give 3% raises across the board for the first time in 12 years. Congratulations, board, for doing that. We were able to accomplish this and other financial initiatives due to the good financial management and increased fund balance. We are very pleased, and this is breaking news, we are very pleased that we will be able to hold health insurance rates for the coming year. So insurance rates will not be increasing this year. Wow. Great news. Mr. Benji Bates is right here. I'm sure he's smiling about that, too. <laughs> As demonstrated, our general fund balance has improved considerably since 2015-2016, turning around the, the systematic downward trend of the previous years. 
So great job, Rhonda Odom and her department for turning that around. It's taken a lot of work to do that. Moving forward, our goal is to continue moving our district into the top half of districts throughout the state of Florida. Four years ago, we were ranked 66 out of 67 districts in the state of Florida, and we have improved our ranking during each of the past three years. As I conclude the state of the district presentation, I would like to mention four areas that you see up here that will be the focus moving forward. These include a focus on developing a new strategic plan. Secondly, improving our financial security. Thirdly, facility and technology improvements. And finally, preparing to implement the new state standards. As I reflect on this past year, I'd like to thank each of our students, parents, teachers, leaders, staff, and our school board for their commitment and dedication to the success of our school district. I continue to be humbled to serve as your leader as our district improves each and every year, and I look forward to the success of this upcoming year. We could not have accomplished so much without the tremendous support of this community coming together. Great things are on the horizon. Our best days are ahead of us.